I don't know if it's uh, if it's me. Maybe I'm just misreading it. But um, is there a spirit of heaviness in this yes. place today? I know we have a lot of things on our plate. We have a lot of things on our minds, a lot of issues in our lives. And a lot of the times, life isn't what we want it to be. And it happens to all of us. And we go through life's uh, highways and byways and past and struggles and good times and bad times. And, and it's, this, this is not going to make you feel any better when I say this, but on one aspect, it's just a part of life, okay? It's just part of the life that we live. Whether you're a believer or not a believer, you're going to have good times and bad times. It's just a fact. It's just what's going to happen. And, you know, you look at it and say, well, I don't want those bad times to come to us. I don't want those bad times to happen to us. And, and, uh, and nobody does. I don't know anybody that welcomes those. But... As a believer, we can rejoice <coughs> in these times. We can be thankful even in times of heaviness and times of struggle and times of, you know, those not so enjoyable moments. Uh, we, can, we can rejoice in this. I'm not saying to rejoice as you would at a, a party, a birthday party or a wedding or something like that, but... You can't rejoice in knowing that Jesus made a promise to us. And the Bible says God is faithful. Yes, okay? yes. And Jesus made a promise to us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Okay? And I know this is part of our prayers a lot of the times, but we ask God to be with us. God be with them. Be with them. And you don't have to do that. Stop wasting your breath when you say that because He already made the promise that He would be with us. Okay? So... Focus on knowing that He is with us and be thankful and then go to God in prayer, okay? And that's, that's really what we can rejoice in, knowing that we do not have to go through life's struggles, life's good times and bad times. We don't have to go alone, amen? amen? We have our family, we have our church family and things like that, but even in that, sometimes we feel like we're alone, but God is with us always, okay? And don't forget that. Don't forget that His love for you is beyond your imagination to even think about His love because it's so awesome, okay? And I wasn't saying that to make you feel good and give you a fuzzy, feel-good type uh, little devotion there, but God does love you, and He is with you, and He never will leave you, nor will He ever forsake you, in spite of you, Okay? And I say that in spite of you because there's nothing you can do to change God. <laughs> Amen? So God is good. Amen? All, All the time? Yes. Amen. All right. Now, let's get into the message today. And uh, I just, I, I know God led me to this study. He led me to this message in Matthew chapter 4. Um, but I'm just going to say that I don't know why. Because I actually had my heart and mind on something else, else this week, and this is where I went. So I just got to rely upon the Lord and uh, trust that this is what is needed for you today, okay? Just because I'm the pastor doesn't make me all knowing, okay? I don't know what you're going through. I don't. You all don't call me and tell me, hey, i got this going on all the time. So um, I'm just going to go with it, and uh, this is what I feel like the Lord led me to bring this church this morning. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. A little bit of reading, but it all goes together uh, with this message today. And Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. 
And the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Then Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on, the high, on a high exceeding mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Father, today, uh, again, we come to you. Lord, not religiously, not because this is what we do every Sunday, but because we need you this hour. We need you, God, every hour, every minute of our life. And we pray today. Not only I as the pastor here are in praying, but we together pray because we need you and we rely solely upon you, God. And I pray, Father, today that our hearts would open up, our minds would open up, we would be tender to this subject and rely that on you, Father God, that you're going to give us the food that we need in this hour. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Today's message deals with decisions. Now, there's a lot of different types of studies that you can pull out of this 11 verses of Matthew 4. And a lot of different avenues we can go down because these first 11 verses in chapter 4 deal with pretty much everything in our life, um, which is sin, for one. And sin, the Bible says, <clears throat> there's three categories of it. We find that in 1 John 2 15. But we're not going there today, not because we don't need to, but because this is another avenue I believe we can go down in the, in the Scripture. The Bible is alive, amen? Amen. And it's, it's not a dead book, a book that you read one time and put up. It's a Bible, it's the Word of God. It's living, it's accurate, the Bible says. And so, we're going to deal with today, I believe this message now, God is leading me down this avenue of decisions. Everyday decisions, okay? Not just the big ones. Should I purchase this or that, or should I go here or there in some big way, but just the everyday decisions and the effect of, not effect, should I say, but the effect that it has on us and others around us. Yeah. Okay? And not to take for granted or think lightly of our decisions that we make. The question for us, okay, to each of us, okay, if they are important, as you say, Pastor, if these decisions they make are so important, how do we handle these decisions? And still honor God and still have the peace of God. Okay? And so that is the question of the day. How do I handle these decisions, everyday decisions, honor God and have His peace as well? Okay? Now, I want to talk, first of all, about some different types of personalities or attitudes or people. You can, however you want to say that. Okay? Different types of people with different types of attitudes. Now, I know there's a lot more than what I listed that. I want to list four. I know you can come to me with your theological, philosophical, all those different types. You know, say, Shannon, there's so much more that you didn't cover. That's fine, but I just want to cover four today. And first type or attitude of person that we're going to talk about is the footloose and fancy free. That person who doesn't seem to have a care in the world. That person who you, if you're not this type, you kind of envy that person. You think, well, wow, I wish I could be that way because they don't seem to have a care in the world. They don't seem to let anything bother them. Everything just kind of rolls off their back, okay? Just, they don't take anything to heart. They're just that, like you say, it's an old term, I know, for some of you younger generation, it's an old term, but footloose and fancy free. They don't think about their decisions. They go about each day without a care in the world. Now, again, this attitude, for some of you, might seem attractive. This personality you might say, well, I wish I could be that way because you're kind of the opposite. But my question for this personality, and I'm not saying either or, but we need to address this. Is this attitude or personality a God-honoring type? Okay? Question number one. Write it down. Is this God-honoring? Okay? Does it accomplish... 
what God wants to be accomplished in his kingdom by using each of us if we all have this kind of attitude. You might say, well, Shannon, where are you going with this? This seems kind of nuts, you know, but just stick with me. I plead with you to stick with me just for a few minutes. Now, there's other people that live in fear. So much fear, this next personality, so much fear that they worry about every little thing. I mean, they worry about their health. They worry about their finances. They worry about everything. And this almost seems to be, in a sense, they just can't move. They, they don't even want to go outside of their home. A lot of times, they don't even want to get out of bed because they worry so much. They wake up and worry and fear is living with them every single day. And that might be one of, it might be you today. Okay? They worry, and by worrying, they almost paralyze themselves or keep themselves from doing anything because they worry so much. They accomplish nothing but worry. This is a type of attitude or personality. This might be you. You might know someone this way. Okay? The next attitude is someone who just overanalyzes everything. They, they look at everything and it's, it's good to look at every decision but sometimes it's just too much. They overthink everything, and they say, well, you know, I know this, but we need to stop back, and we need to think about this a little more, a little more, and then don't accomplish anything. It's just like if you're wanting to build something, and you don't ever get anything done because all you do is think about building it. Okay? How would you like that, Brother Eugene, if that's all your workers ever did is sit back, we need to think about this building before we build it and keep thinking about it and we never get anything done. You know, sometimes that's what we do in our life. That's another type of attitude, okay? But then there's that next personality, that what we call the type A personality. That person that takes the bull by the horns, that has those leadership qualities, okay? And they take the bull by the horns, um, so to speak, and they, they take lots of things and they get them all done. There's an old saying, if you want to get something done, find the busiest person around and give it to them, and they're going to get it done, Okay? They seemingly get all the things done that need to get done, and for some people, they really envy or they despise this kind of person because they don't want somebody to take that bull by the horns. And I've seen that happen a lot too.